All right, welcome to our opening Fusion 360 tutorial. We're going to jump right in here. We're going to be making a dog, dog tag shaped keychain. And the very first thing we should always do is make sure that we save a file. So fastest way to do that is to hit Command S on your keyboard if you're on a Mac, Control S if you are on a Windows computer. And we're going to make sure that our keychain is set to um, admin project. So if yours is different, make sure you change your location. And the title I would like you to use is your last name and then an underscore shift hyphen shift minus sign and then type the word keychain. And then you can go ahead and save that. So we always want to save the file and your file name should pop up right up here at the top of your screen. The next thing I want you to do is to come over here to the top left and find the word create, click the drop down menu and choose new component. Now this is just good habit forming, uh, good practice. We're only making one component, we're just making a keychain, but if this were lots of components, you would want to make a new component for each part uh, in your assembly. And we're going to rename component one to keychain. And the reason we do that is because um, the computer will name them sequentially. So component one, component two, component 495. Uh, you will not remember what component 36 is, I promise. And we're going to click okay. Once we have those things saved, the next thing that we're going to do, we've got to create a two dimensional sketch. So you're going to come up here to the very top left corner. There is a icon right next to the word design, has a green plus mark on it. If you hover, you'll notice it says create sketch. Uh, and if you hover longer, it will give you a description. Click on that. You'll get some orange craziness on your screen. What these are, are your three primary axes. So red is the X axis, just like on a graph. Y is the other axis, or green is the Y axis, axis excuse me, uh, like on a graph. And one of the things you may or may not be accustomed to is a Z axis, the blue one, which is the up and down axis. We need to choose a work plane, and I would suggest that you start off with X, Y, which is this one right here. So hover over top of it, it will turn gray, click once, and you're gonna notice that your screen changes, it now looks like graph paper. The very first tool that we're going to use is the rectangle tool, and there's two ways to get it. Number one, it may be in your toolbar here. You'll notice mine is not. Uh, I can click create and find rectangle, and we're going to use two point rectangle. You can also just type the letter R on your keyboard. It will start the tool. We have a target in the middle of our screen. This is the origin, zero, zero. And you'll notice if I hover right over top of it, a very light blue box appears. This is a snap, it's kind of like a magnet. It attracts my mouse right to that point. I'm going to click one time. Don't click and drag, just move your mouse pointer. I'm gonna bring it up here to the top right quadrant and you'll notice I have a rectangle that uh, changes infinitely as I move it. You can try to adjust it to the size you want, but I will give you a warning that it is very, very difficult to manually move it to the exact size. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to tell the computer what size it should be and it will make it for us. So you'll notice that my number on the left-hand side of the rectangle is highlighted. All I'm going to do, don't delete anything, don't click on anything, just type. I'm going to type 1.125, so 1.125. And then to toggle down to the other number, I'm going to hit the tab key on the left of my keyboard. You'll notice that the bottom number has highlighted. I'm simply going to type in two. Once I have those two numbers plugged in, I can hit the return or enter key on my keyboard and it should turn a light colored blue. The light colored blue denotes that this is a closed region. In other words, this loop uh, starts where it stops. If it doesn't turn light blue, there's a gap somewhere that you have to find. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So you've already made a rectangle. Now what we need to do is we need to locate a circle in here because we're gonna round both sides of the rectangle. So to do that, I want you to get your line tool, which is right up here at the top left. You can also type the letter L. We're gonna click our line tool and we're gonna use that snap again. So you'll notice if I hover over the top left corner, when I get close to the corner, I get a blue box. That is the perfect endpoint. So I'm gonna click once and then I'm gonna move my mouse down to the bottom right. Watch for the little blue box and click again. So what you should have is a rectangle with a nice diagonal line. In the computer, this diagonal line runs perfectly from corner to corner. We're gonna go back up to the top left corner and choose our circle tool, or you can type the letter C. 
What I would like you to do then is I want you to slide along that diagonal line without clicking. So I'm just moving my mouse right now. You should see a light blue X that indicates an intersection. And when I get to the midpoint or the middle of that line, a little blue triangle will appear. When you see the little blue triangle, click. And now if I move away, you'll notice I've got a circle attached. There are two different ways to get this size the way that we want. What we're trying to do is have our circle touch exactly the outside of the rectangle, okay, on the widest part. I already know that my rectangle is two inches wide, so I can just type two, and that will make the circle point exactly where we want, okay? Or we can go in and manually set it. I would suggest that you type two, and then you can click or hit return to make it stick. So if you made it this far, this is where we want to be at. The next task that we have is we need to trim away all of our excess parts. Okay, so we want to cut off the top of the circle, the bottom of the circle, and get rid of these corners. To do that, I'm going to use the trim command. So we've been working in the top left over the create tab. If you move right one section of your toolbar, you're going to see where it says modify, and then you'll see a nice big pair of black scissors that's called trim. Click on the trim command or type the letter T. And trim command in Fusion 360 is very smart. So anytime you see a purple or a pink line, that indicates something that it will cut away. And it will show you exactly what it's going to cut away. So I want to take off the top half of the circle, the bottom. And then it helps to zoom in. You're going to cut off the corners of the rectangle. There are eight total lines. We'll get our last two right here. You might have to zoom a little bit. Now, technically speaking, we could leave our diagonal line here, but that would deprive us of the chance to learn how to delete things. So to drop a tool, you can hit your escape key. I usually hit it twice out of habit. And then to delete a line, we can do one of two different things. Number one, we can just click on it. It'll turn dark blue, and then you can hit the delete key on your keyboard. A word of caution if you're using Windows. Windows has a backspace key and a delete key. The delete key is the one you want. Backspace will not do what you expect it to do. So we're going to hit delete, and our line is gone. Okay. Now, if I make a mistake and I accidentally delete something, there's an undo arrow up here in the very top left of your screen. I can click that. I might have to click it twice sometimes, and it'll bring my line back. Undo is your friend. So there is infinite undos in this program. You can literally undo the whole way back to the beginning of your drawing. So if you really mess up, start clicking undo until you get back to where you messed up. The other way that we can delete a line is to hover. I'm going to right click, two finger click on your MacBook. And you'll see I have this clock menu right here. All I've got to do is find delete, click it, and the line goes away. So those are two different ways to delete your line. At this point, we've got our proper shape. There's a big green check mark up here in the top right corner of your screen. Go ahead and click Finish Sketch. And now it has kicked us back into sort of our 3D world. Uh, a word of caution if you've worked the, watched the introduction, you'll note that I remembered to tell you not to work flat. So this is flat. Hover over your view cube, click the white house icon, and it's going to flip it. This is in isometric mode. Uh, if you don't know what isometric mode, it is a form of 3D drawing uh, that actually happens on 2D paper. So now we can kind of see this in 3D. We're going to use the extrude command. Extrude is up here in the top left. I'm going to choose extrude. It looks like a blue rectangular prism. Remember, if you hover over top of it, it will tell you what it is. Your shape should automatically turn a darker shade of blue. If it doesn't, just click inside of it and it will. Now for the extrude command, what it does is it takes our two-dimensional sketch that we just made, and we're going to stretch it into a three-dimensional object. You can do that by grabbing the blue arrow and moving it up or down. Okay, either or works. All right. Or, again, the faster, smarter way is to type it in. I don't need to click on anything. It, right now it's highlighted blue. You'll notice my size right here. It's asking how tall do I want it. I'm going to go ahead and type 0.1. After you've done that, hit return or enter, and you've made your first 3D object.